So if you look at the rap scene today, it's filled with a bunch of gangster rap, whether it's trap or drill, which are derivatives of gangster rap that we saw in the 80s and 90s in hip hop. Guys like Gunna, Future, NBA Youngboy, Lil Durk, all of these rappers in some form or fashion are doing a derivative of gangster rap. Now, gangster rap originated in the late 1980s to describe a specific subgenre of hip hop music that focused on the harsh realities of urban life, often depicting the struggles and experiences of inner cities communities. This included crime, violence, and socioeconomic issues. One of the earliest and most influential rappers associated with gangster rap is Ice T. His 1987 album, Rhyme Pays, is credited as one of the pioneering works in the game, and songs like Six in the Morning showcased a raw and unflinching portrayal of street life. Another notable figure in gangster rap is Schooly D, who released tracks like Gangster Boogie in the mid 1980s. But the most mainstream and perhaps the most iconic rappers to pioneer gangster rap is a group that we've all heard of called NWA. NWA featured members Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, Easy E, MC Ren, DJ Ella, and Arabian Prince, straight out of Compton, released in 1988, and is considered a cornerstone of gangster rap. In fact, Ice Cube even has a song where he says, I started this gangster shit. Is this the MF and thanks I get? Now, I'm from the West Coast. So I have a lot of respect for Ice Cube, Easy e Dr. Dre, NWA, but I have to admit that NWA pioneering gangster rap is a huge reason why rap is in the current state that it's in right now. We have a bunch of rappers rapping about killing, drilling, trapping, and all this traces back to NWA success with Straight out of Compton. Now, NWA weren't the first rappers to do it, but they were the most mainstream and successful. When you look at some of the top rappers today, Dirk, NBA Youngboy, Future, Gunna, these are guys who are rapping about murders, killings, uh, crime, in first person, drugs, drug dealing. They're rapping about this stuff in first person as if they're doing it. But even Future has admitted, hey, I don't even take Molly Percocet. I'm capping, basically. I'm embellishing it. And when we look back at rappers like Ice Cube, Ice Cube was one of the first mainstream rappers, if not the first, you also mentioned Ice-T, but the most successful to rap about a lifestyle that he was not doing. Now, Ice Cube, he's more derivative of Chuck D, or he tried to be more derivative of Chuck D, speaking on socio-political issues, but... When you listen to Chuck D, Public Enemy, and you listen to Ice Cube, NWA, America's Most Wanted, I think we can all agree that Ice Cube's music has done more harm than good. And we can agree that Chuck D's music has done more good than harm. Now, Public Enemy, It Takes a Nation of Millions, this was an album that inspired songs like Fight the Power, which inspired people, young people specifically, to start thinking about their rights, be thinking about the way they were treated in the community. Whereas NWA more so championed the gangster lifestyle and glamorized the gangster lifestyle. And I think that's where we're at in rap today. We have a bunch of rappers glamorizing gangsterism and a large percent, if not majority of all of these rappers are not even gangsters themselves. And remember, this is technically what Ice Cube is. He has songs like 8-Ball, like Dope Man, he has a song called Gangster Gangster when he's not a gangster at all. He's on a song called Straight Out of Compton and he's not even from Compton. So Ice Cube was really one of the first mainstream, hugely successful rappers who got on by rapping about a gangster lifestyle that they were not living. Now, one of the main critiques that people will have when I say this, one of the main things people will say was, oh, oh, they're, they're just street reporters. Uh, NWA Ice Cube, they're just street reporters. They're just reporting on what they see. There's a difference between reporting on what you see versus speaking like you've actually done it yourself. Go back to Grandmaster Flash. I'm going to take it way back. Grandmaster Flash, he has a song called The Message. And that song is iconic for how he was speaking and reporting on what was going on in New York. Broken glass everywhere, people in the streets, they don't care. Grandmaster Flash effectively spoke on his surroundings without glamorizing gangsterism. And that's the difference between Grandmaster Flash and an Ice Cube. 
I'll use a more recent example. Kendrick Lamar on Good Kid, Mad City. Good Kid, Mad City is an album that's about exactly that. A good kid in a mad city. Kendrick Lamar grew up around Bloods. He grew up in Compton. He saw violence in LA. He speaks about certain incidents that happens. But Kendrick Lamar is not placing himself as the man doing these actions. He's literally rapping about things that are going on around him. Again, this is distinctly different than from what NWA was doing. When Ice Cube's song Gangster Gangster, how does that song start? He says, this is a song about me. This is a song about me. Never should have been allowed out the penitentiary. Then he referenced himself again. Ice Cube would like to say, I'm a crazy dude from around the way. He's speaking as if it's him. Glamorizing the lifestyle to a kid looking up to me. Life ain't nothing but chicks and money. Now, here's another cop-out excuse that people will use when, when I use this critique. And again, I have, I have love for NWA, love for Ice Cube. These are West Coast artists. You know, I do love my West Coast artists. But here's another cop-out people will say, as opposed to just admitting, like, yeah, they did kind of mess up the, the direction rap was going. They'll say, oh, well, well, he's just playing a character. You quote the first lines of Gangsta Gangsta. It's just, this is a song about me. But he his name is O'Shea Jackson. Uh, he's speaking about Ice Cube. He's playing a character. Uh, would do, would you critique Steven Spielberg for having murder in his movies? Do you critique Martin Scorsese for having the mafia in his movies? Now, I'll say this. We would critique Steven Spielberg for having murder in his movies. Martin Scorsese for having murder in their movies. If they were depicting themselves as the murderer and acting out in first person. These rappers are glamorizing the gangster lifestyle, criminal lifestyle. NWA is who I'm speaking about specifically, and their kids. The NWA's kids are trap rappers like Future, Gucci Mane, Dirk, uh, even Lil Wayne. These are the seeds. It's not just West Coast artists who they influence. The whole trap scene and then the drill scene, which evolved from trap. All that can be traced back to gangster rap in the 90s, specifically N.W.A., who was the most successful and popularized it first in the 80s, not even in the 90s. N.W.A. popularized gangster rap and glamorized it in the 80s. But they'll say, well, well, why don't you critique Spielberg or Martin Scorsese? These are film directors. They have murder in their movies. They have sex scenes. What's the issue with Ice Cube when it's not them? They're all playing characters. No, we would critique Spielberg and Scorsese if they were depicting themselves as criminals in first person in their films. And if every other film they put out, they are depicting themselves in the role of the killer. The film is loosely based on their lifestyle, their life and their biography and how they came up. In every other film, they are portraying themselves as a killer. And I'll use an example. Quentin Tarantino, another film director, actually gets criticized for the roles he plays in films. If you watch Quentin Tarantino films like Jackie Brown, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, I would say in at least half of all of Tarantino's films, Tarantino casts himself in the film and every time his character uses the N-word with a hard R. And this is something Tarantino has been criticized for. Rightfully so. Why can't you cast someone else to say the hard R, N-word with a hard R? Why do you even need to have that in the film? Why do you always put yourself in the position to say that word? He has been criticized for this. So for the people, so for the people who say, well, oh, Ice Cube and NWA, they're just playing characters. Do you offer that same defense to Quentin Tarantino and his frequent N-bombs? Of course you don't. And I think it's, and for the record, I think it's fair that Tarantino is cr critiqued in that way. I also think it's fair that he's allowed to do what he wants in his films, but we have to keep the same energy for both sides. Now, the rapper Common from Chicago actually pointed out the destructive nature of N.W.A., Ice Cube, the entire gangster rap era in the late 80s, early 90s that was coming out of the West Coast. Common pointed this out on his song, I Used to Love Her. I Used to Love Her is a song that uses a woman as a metaphor for hip hop and how hip hop has grown out of New York, expanded across the country and evolved into what it was at the time. In these lyrics, Common pretty much in a nutshell talks about how hip hop 
went from being Afrocentric, pro-black, about uplift, pro-black, uh, pro-community, to when it got to LA, we're talking about IST, NWA, Dr. Dre era. Now it's about violence and uh, sex, super over-sexualization and, and gangs. And he mentions that. And Ice Cube actually took issue with this, released a song called West Coast Slaughterhouse. And then after West Coast Slaughterhouse, Common responded with the song called The Bitch In You, where Common says, this ain't no East Coast, West Coast, none of the above. He said he would never diss a whole coast. And it's true. Common was just speaking on what naturally happened in rap. Now, obviously a hit dog is gonna holler because Ice Cube obviously feels responsible for what happened to hip hop. But at the time he didn't want to admit it. So in a nutshell, when you look at what we have in hip hop today, especially on the male side, I'm not really speaking about female rappers here. I have videos about that, but on the male side in the mainstream, when you look at some of the highest selling albums of 2022, which is Gunna, Lil Dirt, Future, Kendrick, Kendrick is exempt from this, Kodak Black, Young Boy, all of these are derivatives of gangster rap. They're either trap, like Gunna, Future, Kodak, or they're drill, like Dirk, or there's some combination of the two, like Young Boy. And they are all on the, if hip hop had a family tree, all of those rappers would be under the NWA Ice T family tree of gangster rap, gl glamorizing the gangster street lifestyle. And in my opinion, this is why hip hop is in the sad state that it's in NWA Ice Cube specifically because he was pinning a lot of those lyrics. They are responsible for partially where we're at in hip hop today. There were even movies like CB4 featuring Chris Rock. People are mimicking and mocking the West Coast gangsterism that has taken over hip hop. You know, they thought it was funny at the time, but little did they know 30 years later, the entire hip hop scene is flooded with this garbage. And the damage it's done to hip hop is one thing, but then you look at the black community as a whole, you can't even wear certain sports hats in LA. If you're a Houston Astros fan, you can't wear sports hats. You can't wear the Playboy bunny hat. You can't. It's such garbage that's flooded our community. And when I was younger and I would hear Dolores Tucker and, 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 and certain people, uh, politicians critiquing hip hop and saying how it was so bad. When I was younger, I used to think, yo, these guys are just uptight. Like, what are they all panties in a bunch for? But nowadays, I, I kind of understand it more. And hip hop continues to degrade. I'll be happy when it's no longer the number one music in America and it's kind of fully gone back to the underground and the only people who are participating are because they want to and because they like the art form rather than they want to make a quick buck. But when you look at where we're at in hip hop today, you turn on that radio, you hear the garbage. NWA and Ice Cube are pretty much the predecessors for that with how they glamorize the street gangster culture in hip hop. They it, it transitioned from Afrocentric, pro-political, you know, I'm talking public enemies, you know, native tongues, all those pretty much got derailed once NWA introduced gangsterism. Then obviously you have the copycats that come after that. And we have where we're at today. NBA Young Boy, Kodak Black, Gunna, Lil Durk. People have are killing each other on records, Julio Fulio, Young and Ace. They're smoking on ops, uh, drill beats, like just complete diss records, dissing the dead. All this is a is a branch on NWA's family tree. And I say this as a guy from the West Coast who actually really likes and respects what Ice Cube has done, not only in hip hop, but business wise. But we got to keep it 100. Top5RockWebsite.com. Peace.